I help us understand what walking worthy of the Lord means. Let's read this together. Colossians 1, verse 10 in LT. Then the way you live will always honor and please God. Come on now. And your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you grow as you learn to know God better and better. You know somebody will give God a hand, God will praise right there. That's how we walk worthy. How do we do that? That we are looking at ways that we are living in a way that honors God. We're living in a way that pleases God. We're not doing, we're, now here's the point. We're not pleasing, we're not trying to please God to be accepted by Him. We've already been accepted, so now we live out what we know. Uh, well, we're, 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 not, we're, not doing, we're not doing things trying to win God's approval. We already have God's approval as believers. And since we have it, we now walk it out. We're not, we're not trying to go back and not do something to get God to like us more or love us more. God already loves us. God already loves us. So at this point now, we are trying to go back and live in a way that's going to honor. If, if Jesus died on the cross, the very least we could do is live a life that honors God. Come on. The very least we could do is live a life that pleases God. The very least we could do. About that, if everybody else in the world was saved except us, Jesus still would have died. And in turn, because of what He sacrificed, the least we could do is honor and please God by our, and produce every kind of good fruit. I love this next part. All the while you're growing, as you know God better and better. Yes. How many know God better? Today? No, no more about God today than you did last year. This time. Yeah, yeah, you know God. See, uh, uh, see, that's, see, that's why you know God is good God because there's no way. I was some folk been through this year. Yes. That if this had been five years ago, yes. there's no way we would have been able to stand. Yes. But now when the midst of it came up, yes. you're not only able to stand, you can just stand because God is Almighty good God. This is God stand here, I know God better. And tomorrow I'm gonna know him better than I do today. And next week I'm gonna know him better than I do this week. Why? Because we're gonna learn and know more about him more and more. Every day with Jesus is better than the day before. If we really recognize we're ready to walk worthy of the Lord. So how do, how do believers then demonstrate that we are walking worthy of the Lord? How do we demonstrate? So very quickly, just to remind us to kind of frame this for us as well, we've been domiciled and reconciled. We talked about domiciled before is where you live. It's a dwelling place. But the last the part I want us to walk away with here <clears throat> is that for being domiciled, it means it's our permanent abode, your permanent address. It is a, it's a permanent, fixed, or principal home or legal residence. So let's talk about the things we already have now that should be permanent in our lives. We should have what? Peace. Permanent peace. Permanent peace. Glory, when you get hold of that peace, you don't want to let it go. Amen, somebody. Got permanent, I'm telling you, there's nothing like having peace. Glory to God. There's nothing like having peace. But not only do we have permanent peace, we also have what? Permanent what? Preparation. Now what does that mean? That at this point, that we are preparing to receive all God promised. So, so if I'm going to go back to here and say, it's don't, don't pray for it if you're not preparing for it. Yes. At some point, I believe that God has already made provision for it. So now I'm just preparing. Now, now somebody may say, well, why don't I see everything manifested that God has in my life? Maybe I haven't prepared for it. But why is it? It, it, it makes no, it, 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 as much as some of the some of fathers want to have a two-seater. If you got 15 kids, you better get a minute there. Yeah, I mean, you gotta prepare for what you believe in God for you. And so, 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 so as I said, permanent preparation. I'm preparing to receive all the grace. And preparing to receive all the favor. And preparing to receive all the blessings that God already has as well. Pray for. Pray, prepare for what you're praying for. But also we have permanent what? Praise. Then permanent what also? And here's the point right here. Permanent positioning. What are we saying here? That again, we cannot stop God's blessings. We can be out of position to receive his blessings. Yes. We cannot stop God's blessings. We can be out of position to receive what God has promised. Yes. We cannot stop yes. God's blessings. Yes. We can be out of position to receive what God has for us. So if the blessings are here, and I'm over here. It's not like the blessings are not flowing. I'm just out of position to receive it. And God said, oh, he said that I want you to know I'm not mad at you. I'm not angry with you. I just want you to come back and receive it. Everything I blood has come, the blood of Jesus made available to you. Permanent positioning. So we must read this with me, please. Positioning yourself 
to receive all God has for your life. And how many know God has some wonderful things for your life? I said, give God a hand, and you know God has some wonderful things for your life. Our role is to make sure that by, by being here on Sunday morning, we are positioning ourselves to receive. By studying the word, we are positioning ourselves to receive. By praying, we are positioning ourselves to receive what God has for us. I, I just love this. I want to say, spend just a moment here. Let's read this together. Position yourself to allow God to position himself in your life. Read that again, please. Position yourself to allow God to position himself in your life. One more time. Position yourself to allow God to position himself in your life. What does that mean? That means then that we, instead of acting fleshy, we act according to the Father's, what the Father's directed us. That, that as we are positioned in him, we don't respond out of emotion. We don't respond out of our feelings. We don't respond according to the world. That because now God is big in us, we respond like he respond. Amen, somebody. So we position ourselves in him. So he can position ourselves in us. So that he, that he can position himself in our lives as well. So we need to get positioned for a transition. So Donald style. Next we talk about reconcile. Very quick, I want to skip this and then go back to our primary points for today. Reconciliation simply is restoration to favor. Rest, rest, re restoration to favor. Restoration to favor. But I have a few more definitions I want to give to you for your, note, for your notes as well. So, so I love this point right here. If you just write down, reconciliation is simply reforming relationships. That's really what reconciliation is. A relationship was good. Something happened. And now it's all horrible. And now what reconciliation is, says we're going to reform what was deformed. <laughs> we're going to reform well, and then make sure now, and I love it, says that now we are reestablishing a good relationship that went bad. That's what restoration is. That there's nothing like having, everybody here has had somebody in life that we had a long term relationship with, something happened, and all of a sudden we act like they, we didn't even want to see them anymore. Reconciliation says we are going to go back and reform that relationship. And we established that relationship like this never occurred. And so, gee, peace on earth and glory, and, and uh, uh, peace on earth and mercy now. God and sinners do what? Reconcile. This is now saying that now we have been reconciled back to God because, even, look at this now, in the past, Old Testament, our behavior made our good relationship with God bad. In the past, what we said, what we did, where we went, how we behaved, made our good relationship bad. But now Jesus put all that upon himself. So now as a result of this, as long as I believe right, at this point I'm walking in a reconciled relationship with the Lord. My behavior, my actions, what I'm saying, what I'm doing. Now when God looks at us, he's not looking at us, he's looking at us through the blood of Jesus. I told you all before that I was watching and listening to, to, uh, to Dr. Charles Stan, this is a wonderful, uh, wonderful communicator of the word. And he was saying he's into photography. And he had a red object. And he was taking a picture of the red object. But for God, he had a red lens on his camera. So even though this red object was here, he looked through the red lens, and as a result, the object that was red looked white. So if the red represents our sin, God looks us through the red blood of Jesus. He doesn't see our sin anymore and our shortcomings anymore and our faults anymore. All he sees now is who we are in Christ Jesus. As a result, he doesn't hold our sin against us because all of our sin, all of our shortcomings, all of our slips were put on Jesus. So now we are free to love him and serve him and worship him and adore him. Everything I did wrong was put on that cross. So now I'm free to honor and worship God freely. Too many believers are walking around sin beaten and sin driven and sin conscious. And all we're talking about is all our sin, 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 sin. Now, Jesus took care of our sin. So now we are free to honor and worship God to live a life in a manner worthy of the Lord. So there's all the idea about reconciliation, reforming relationships. Reconciliation is an act of agreement after a quarrel. It's a resolution after a dispute here. But here's where it is all together. This, this, I, I need you to really get this point, get this in your mind here. Before 
we got saved. This, the chair is, the, the chair is like our lives. The S represents us. We were at the center in charge on the throne of our lives. And here you have over here, over here, y'all have over here, you got Jesus outside. Now we think about Jesus. When he got saved, reconciled with God, who is now on the throne of our lives? Yeah, so now the Jesus, so now, now we are trying, now we are living and speaking and addressing lives that are consistent with who we are walking worthy of the Lord. In other words, we got dethroned when Jesus became Lord of our lives. Glory to God. We got dethroned. We got off the throne. And so now we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believing in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. Now we're able to now go back and live lives that are worthy because he is now on the throne of our lives. Yeah. So how do we demonstrate that we are walking worthy of the Lord? So from 1 Colossians 1, 1 through 21, I'd like for you, if you would, to write down the word love as an acronym, love. Now I'm going to go back under each one of these letters. I'm going to give us one scripture that deals with what we're talking about on today. So if you write down that word love, and we're going to look at just a couple of verses out of Colossians 1. So if you would turn me now to Colossians chapter 1, we're going to look at this on the King James Version, Colossians chapter 1, and you'll find Colossians right after Philippians, and you'll find it right before you get to the point of getting to 1 Thessalonians, help nobody. So in Colossians chapter 1, and I want to do is make sure we have a chance, let's read verses 9 and 10 together from Colossians chapter 1. I want you to repeat me, I'm ready. I'm ready. To receive the word. I'm prepared to receive the word. I'm excited about receiving the word. Won't you stand even now in the presence of the Lord as we read Colossians chapter 1? And this is looking at verses 9 and 10 today. Now, the whole chapter, actually, up through 21, 22, is where our teaching comes from for today. And the chapter has in its total the title of 29 verses. We're just going to read verses 9 and 10 today to lay a foundation and then, and then share a few points here. So Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, let's read this together from the King James Version. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Keep going, verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Paul is writing to these people called Gnostics, who believe that the more knowledge you have, the closer you are to God. So that's what he said. I need you to know that you have, I need you to have spiritual knowledge according to his will, not your will instead. So now I ask you to write down this acronym love. So the rest of our scripture now, we're going to go back in and look at what this chapter talks about and how we now walk worthy of the Lord, looking at the acronym love and how we have scriptures corresponding to each letter of the letter of love. So love, first, first one we have is love. So, so the A for there is just love. So what we have right here is Colossians 1, 4 and 1, 8 says, love which you have for the saints, and love in the spirit. So your L just goes down on your on your outline there is love. It's love which you have for the saints, love in the spirit. If we're going to really walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, love has to be the driver. I say love has to be the driver. I say love has to be the driver. I don't care what they did to you. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care how they treated you. At this point, Jesus showed us amazing love by dying on the cross. And now, as a result, we go out and we demonstrate love as well. Let me give you an E right here that goes with love as well. Epaphras. Epaphras. Now, this is from verse 7. This is one of the companions. Now, why are we talking about his name? I love this because what his name means, dedicated to love. That, that if we're going to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, we have to be committed and dedicated and focused on loving. How many of us have had people in our lives that make it hard to love them? Mm -hmm. Amen. So we have, to, we have to have to be dedicated and say, you know what? That I cannot keep stop loving you because God hasn't stopped loving me. 
And as hard as it was for God to love me, the least I can do is love 